I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and this is part of our equipment series. And today we are going to talk about leads and collars, uh, kind of the differences between different leads and collars that you might use for your show dog in the show ring, when, where, all kind of my tips and tricks around it. All right, so first of all, let's start with the basics. So basically we used to call this a choke collar or you know in chain form a choke chain we now call it a slip collar and that's because it slips um, you have more control because it, it does get tight around your dog's neck um, and they come in you know a nylon or soft collar and as well a chain so slip collars are great uh, they are probably the most popular collar used at a dog show and they can serve many, many different purposes, training, how pretty they look. When it comes to how big they are around your dog's neck, I don't like a super tight collar because that collar leaves um, no room for you to be able to move it, maneuver the collar around your dog's neck. And basically how long or short you want that collar is really personal preference. Now, it can either be made out of something soft, like, you know, we would refer to this as nylon. It could be made out of chain, like, and we would call this a snake chain. You can see how um, these links fit together and they look kind of snake-like up close, or just, you know, another simple plain chain. And of course, whether they are in nylon chain or snake chain, they can come in different thicknesses, etc., as well as different lengths. So for me, when I'm starting out with a puppy of almost any breed, I'm gonna use a very, very thick lead, whether it is a slip nylon, so I like nylon for puppies, or a Resco type lead, more about those in a minute. So you can see they come in different colors. Some people like the color of the nylon to as closely match their dog as possible. Some people like silver chains, some people like a darker, almost black chain or a fancy gold chain. Again, personal preference. So another type of lead that you may know about is a martingale. So a martingale is going to have a lead that can only go to a fixed um, circumference, and but it can be loosened and tightened by this other kind of loopy lead. This ring connects to your leash and then this goes around the dog's neck. And again, the martingale can come in chain, snake chain, nylon, some leather, sometimes a combo, where maybe the martingale part of the leash um, or the collar part that goes around your dog's neck could be chain and the other part could be nylon, vice versa, leather, etc. right? So, but this, any martingale, the part that goes around your dog's neck is a fixed size. Again, they come in all sizes and then the opening and closing is through this other loop and this connects to your leash, all right? So those are, you know, slip collars, martingale collars. Now we're going to go to like a Resco type lead. So Resco is a brand name. They are made out of this kind, they call it Naga hide. It's kind of a waxed uh, nylon or cotton. And then it has this slide slip. So you can make your lead as big or as small as you want. It comes in two different widths. So this is the three eighths width, also known as a wide martingale, or I like to call it a big, or sorry, a wide resco. I like to call it a big fat resco personally. Um, and it comes in this 3 16th width as well. And you can see they come in many different colors. So actually, typically they come in black, brown, or white. You can sometimes get a gray one. And there are some companies, not Resco itself, but make the same style of lead in, in kind of designer colors, right? But these are the more typical colors. So that kind of gets us down to the basics of leads and collars. Well, we didn't really talk about leads that would go with maybe some of those slip chains. So some of your options might be um, a lead, I call this a loop lead because this loopy end would go through the ring of your collar and I'll get, so, you know, they also come in many different widths. So I might take this loop and I would put it through the ring of my collar and then feed the lead through it so that you have basically one continuous lead and collar, right? And one that's, all, I like to do it all the same color. So mine typically look like this. So here is my slip collar attached to my lead. And you can see that I don't use a snap lead, right? So here is a snap. This is called a bolt snap because this looks like a bolt. To me, uh, snap leads are the ones that I don't like the most. First of all, the bolt can easily be touched by your finger and then your dog is set free at the dog show or another inopportune moment. So if I am using a clip, I would like it to just be a different kind of clip without this bolt that is harder to undo. As well, the bolt has, or the snap of any kind has weight. 
So if you're thinking that the collar comes out to around your dog's ear and then there's this weight of the clip at that point, that clip can actually interfere with your dog. It can like kind of smack them in the side of the face. If you have a breed that is supposed to use their ears in the ring, for instance, a Shetland Sheepdog, a Doberman Pinscher, this can actually cause a lot of grief because they hear the bolt, the snap kind of moving around and it makes them flick their ears a little bit so it's not ideal. Um, there's many reasons why I just don't like a snap on my leads at all. Many sight hounds just don't like that weight. So I typically like to use one of these loop ended leads um, into the collar so that it is one big, huge lead and collar all together. That is my personal preference. So another thing I want to talk to you about is that there's a lot of those leads that are very popular now and they're called kangaroo leads. They're made out of kangaroo hide. They are soft. Uh, they come in many different colors. They're typically braided. They're really, really gorgeous leads. I love them a lot. You can get them with the loop end in the end. So you're not worried about that bolt. One of the things about the kangaroo leads is you can get them custom made with beads. Now the beading is gorgeous. I will give you that. But I also think about it, some people have beading that goes all the way down the lead. And think about it when you're supposed to be neatly holding that leash in your hand. Now you're holding all these beads in your hand. It just makes for it like a big handful of leash. As well, those beads are heavy, right? So they're weighing down the leash, especially if you have a young dog or a dog that doesn't really like the collar or again, an ear breed where they are asked to show expression with their ears up in the ring, these beads can just cause a lot of distraction. So if I have a lead with beads, typically it's going to be like this, where I have just one set of beads kind of close to the um, collar, just so that you can see it in the ring, but it's not interfering with my hand and how I hold on to the leash. But again, this is complete personal preference. Um, I just don't think that there's ever been a dog that like won or lost based on how many beads they had on the leash. So you might like it, maybe get a beautiful custom leash with like lots of beads on it for taking your dog for a walk, but it's not always the most practical choice actually in the ring. So a little, like here is my personal dog's show leash right now. She has a chain martingale and I have actually attached it to a narrow resco because I couldn't find a nylon leash that I thought was long enough. And then at the other end, I have just wound up the excess lead and made this leash as long as I personally want it, my custom length, by just putting a simple rubber band around the other end and then bada bing, bada boom, I have the exact length of leash that I want. So like this is the leash that I'm actually currently showing my own dog on right now. So as you can see, there are many different sizes, shapes, colors of leads and collars. So a little just brief recap, when I am starting my puppy, young dogs, I like to start them either on a very fat, soft slip collar made of nylon, or like I said, the big fat, the three eighths inch Resco lead, because I feel they can lean into it, they can push into it, and it's a little more forgiving. I can get the head carriage out of them, the control I want out of them without having like a very thin lead, like maybe just making them uncomfortable under their chin. So when it comes to picking um, your leash, your collar for the show ring, know that there are many, many different options out there. All of them have advantages and disadvantages. And with most show dogs, I have found that they probably have like maybe three different collars throughout their show career, like a bigger, fatter one for that puppy stage, that training stage. And then typically the one I think they can graduate to. And then typically through trial and error, I actually get down to the one that is the most comfortable, is the most practical for that breed and just works between myself and the dog that I'm showing. So next time you're looking for a leash and collar, remember there's lots of options out there. We hope that that helped. Hi guys, thanks for joining us on another video in our equipment series. Like we said, there is a lot of equipment here that we need to cover. So if we haven't yet hit the piece of equipment that you're yearning to learn about, let us know in the comments below and we will add it to our very next one. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe because then you won't miss out on a video that maybe you've requested or something that you want to know about. Um, we are always here for you to answer any of your questions about these or any other products, any other thing that you need to know to take great care of your dog, whether you're in the salon, going to a dog show, or just trying to get your dog groomed at home in the easiest and most efficient way possible. So thanks again for joining us in our equipment series.